So hello everyone and welcome to the another session in the data R series. We are thrilled to be here with you this evening for a session full of action pack learning. I am Rishab Kumbhalkar, part of the data science team at Analytics Vidya, and I'll be the moderator for this session along with Ketak Gunjal. For those who have joined us for the first time, a brief introduction about the data R sessions. The data R is a series of webinars conducted by Analytics Vidya, led by top industry experts. It is a fun way to understand the concepts of data science from the leading players in the data tech domain. And as the name suggests, it's one hour dedicated to data. We are hopeful that these sessions are going to be a great source of enrichment and value adding for our community members. Now, on to our session today, which is about casual inference in practice. In this data hour, we will learn about what is casualty and how can we infer that, uh, that to test our hypothesis. We will also be learning how to implement casual inference using Python library and how Netflix use casual inference for their decision making process. This will help you to understand the basics of casualty, its importance and application in various real time use cases. I hope you are excited to attend this data hour with us. Okay, uh, now on to our speaker. In this session of data hour, we have Prabhakaran Chandran from Bengaluru, India with us. Prabhakaran is currently working as a data and decision scientist in MU Sigma, a leading problem solving company since 2019. He is proficient in advanced analytics, statistics, Python, R, SQL, he has been a part of two members team to build AI based solutions for Fortune 500 firm, firms in the area of computer vision, natural language processing and deep learning. So over to you Prabhakaran, the virtual stage is all yours. Yeah, um, am I audible? Uh, yeah, your audio is coming. Properly. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me stop this. Yeah, um, please okay. go ahead. So I, I need a permission, like the host to disable okay, the okay, participant. Okay, okay, okay. Just a second. Just a second. Uh, let okay. me see. Okay. Uh, yeah. I hope now you are. You'll be able. Okay. Cool. Just. Is it visible now? Yeah, yeah. I'll just put in my the uh, slide. Yeah. The cool. Screen is visible and your audio is good. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's get started. So, um, hello everyone. Very good evening. Uh, myself Prabhakaran. I am working as a, a data and decision scientist uh, for last. Uh, it, it's going to be like uh, nearly three year, three to four years. Yeah. So. Uh, I've been working on uh, various enterprise level uh, problems in terms of uh, uh, analytics, machine learning, natural language processing, computer vision. It's like wide area of uh, problems have been solved. So uh, today we'll be discussing about causal inference. So causal inference is a very unique topic and it's kind of an ocean where you, you, you need to learn a lot and the applications are also uh, uh, like can be applied in a, uh, like various uh, use cases and uh, industries, right? So to set the context, what are we going to learn today, and uh, uh, what can we expect from today's uh, data hour? Uh, we'll be uh, like learning about what is causation and how can we actually uh, utilize causation in terms of uh, uh, like measure various enterprise level activities. So it's going to be the combination of statistics and uh, graph theory and uh, uh, the machine learning. So um, a few of them are rising hands. Um, 
okay uh, let us see guys if you have any queries uh, please uh, put it in the q and a section okay yeah please continue sir. cool yeah so uh, so that like if we could understand uh, the application or like the intuition behind the uh, causal inference we'll be able to design various uh, use cases in our industry um, uh, the like like various use cases we can uh, bring uh, even like nowadays like we are concentrating more on machine learning even like deep learning nlp but causal inference can be added as a flavor to various uh, um, like uh, domains like nlp we can do recommendation systems we can use uh, causal uh, inference and causality computer vision we can use so likewise uh, uh, it has a huge uh, uh, like uh, use cases and we'll be uh, we'll also be discussing about what are the few enterprise level applications how netflix is actually using causal inference uber is using or uh, microsoft uh, is using and then we'll be uh, learning about how can we actually use uh, causal inference with the help of a python package which is do why right so these are all the things that we're going to learn today so let's get into the uh, uh, like the content so as we all uh, working as a data scientist are uh, interested in uh, uh, data science domain aspiring data scientists have joined the session so let's assume that we are given with a, uh, like a store sales data and the ask is we need to come up with the various factors that are affecting the sales and we have certain hypothesis saying that like are we getting good sales during the holidays what is the impact of uh, uh, holidays on our sales do we have correct marketing strategy in place likewise if we have a store sales data we'll be having n number of hypotheses around that it's not just we, we need to predict the sales for next few months and also the company or enterprise or any sort of uh, uh, business team would like to see what are the different factors impacting the sales that visibility is required that is that is what uh, 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 the current target of many uh, machine learning teams bringing the visibility or explainability of the models right so usually if we have multiple attributes in our data let's say we have uh, like a month year uh, and also we have some uh, promotional activities uh, holidays we have like we, we would be having like many uh, attributes x variables and we would be having a one y variable which is our sales right straight away if we get the data we'll be start doing uh, eda and plotting some graphs saying that okay attribute one which is um, uh, unit price is impacting the sales our promotional activities impacting the sales but what are we actually uh, uh, like getting it are we uh, uh, like straight away conveying that um, uh, like the sales is being impacted by um, um, the like sales is being impacted by the unit price or sales is being impacted by the uh, promotional activity are we going to say the impact measure or are we just saying that like sales and uh, uh, unit price is having some correlation or some association the second one is what we are actually um, uh, like getting from the analysis but we are pretending to say that price has impact on uh, on these sales our uh, um, promotional activities have impact on sales so there is a huge difference between association and causation causation is nothing but which is actually making it happen but association is nothing but like uh, just having some common direction or common overlap right so that's what like we need to answer that questions like uh, do we have a reliable answer to answer uh, like a set of hypothesis that we have listed before are we able to quantify the impact of one variable on the another variable so these things that we are missing right so so actually uh, these uh, uh, problems are actually because of various uh, yeah so um, like when we discuss the price and uh, sales usually we we are calculating the association but not the causation which means whether sales is a uh, price is the actual cause or actual reason for the sales increase or decrease that's what we need to understand right 
so before getting into the details like how one is affecting another whatever it is like we 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 are actually having three major problems in terms of uh, analyzing the data and coming up with the insights if you see this uh, graph if you see this graph like you can see that uh, like more iphones means more people die from the falling from downstairs like we could see that the correlation between uh, iphone sales and uh, uh, deaths caused by falls uh, uh, downstairs Our, uh, in the second one we have uh, uh, like per capita consumption of uh, uh, high fructose uh, corn syrup versus spending on uh, admission to spectator sports like uh, two different things one is consumption of syrup and another one is admission to a spectator both of them having some correlation saying that uh, um, saying that like uh, uh, they are sharing the same direction or both of them are in two different di direction but if we do our conventional analysis we will come up with the uh, like a conclusion of saying iphone sales is impacting its or um, uh, spending in uh, us uh, sports academy is impacting the per capita uh, uh, consumption so this looks very weird because we are com coming to the conclusion of why it is happening just with the help of correlation so these kind of things you can easily do that like even you can uh, take your salary and uh, someone else uh, salary from uh, some other country even if you try to uh, plot the graph and if you try to analyze it like even you can take any sort of parametric or non parametric tests understanding that whether uh, there is a like dependency between one variable to another variable you can take t test or you can take uh, even anova right but all of them will say that like there is some sort of association which means the distribution of data has some common overlap it doesn't mean that one distribution is actually causing the another distribution so that we need to understand right so that is what spurious correlation so it is not reliable at all as well as when we do uh, analysis we we often come up with uh, a, a syndrome or a paradox which is simpson paradox which is nothing but whenever we analyze the data just with the two variables which is x and y variable we'll be having one sort of insight here we have taken like investment in channel a channel can be anything it can be a radio or it can be a a, a particular uh, 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 like a social media or it can be a uh, like a, um, uh, like a direct marketing investments and we have roi in place when we just see the relationship between the investments in channel and roi you could see that upward trend which means because of investment in channel we are able to uh, get more roi but the problem is when you slice the data when you add the another variable to have the more precision in terms of insights you can get to know that like uh, if if you consider uh, the covid status pre covid post covid which is like uh, before 2022 after 2022 you see that like uh, you can clearly see that uh, uh, like a downward trend and that effect of downward trend is also changing which means the insights are completely changing previously we were thinking that investments in channel a is actually increasing the roi right but the problem is when we have another layer of variable which could define whether it is a post covid period or pre covid period we could understand that investments in the channel a is actually decreasing the roi right but the magnitude of decrease is vary based on the pre and post covid right so it's two different uh, it's the same data point but two different insights two different decisions because we are not we are not con considering the variable which can impact on x and y which means the third variable is actually controlling few things that we are not considering right this this is what the simpson paradox and the third one is when we have uh, like a, a set of like uh, let's say here we have like many attributes like three to four attributes and we have sales right in that case obviously everyone would like to fit a linear regression model or any sort of like machine learning model and come up with a uh, equation saying like um, um, y equals to mx plus b or uh, let's say uh, here i have considered that like i have five different uh, x variables study hours exercise hours protein intake library hours sleeping hours it's more like uh, mental and physical and uh, uh, learning related uh, stuff right and in y axis like in the y variable i have considered gpa how 
my daily day to day activity is impacting on gpa that's what my i i want to do that i want to study right in that case if you fit a uh, machine learning model if you fit a uh, linear regression model obviously we can get y equals to mx plus b or mx plus c or beta not plus beta 1 x1 here i have just given an example of y equals to m not plus m1 x1 until m m m5 x5 plus some sort of residuals will be having right so it seems like a uh, a, a linear regression and a linear algebra format right it's a linear equation and even in linear algebra we can find a, a something or like we can we have a concept called symmetry which is nothing but y like whatever x axis like whatever left hand side we have can be uh, like uh, translated into the y hand side which means like if you have the y value y equals to mx plus b obviously we can get to know about like what is the x value right but in the reality we can uh, measure the uh, value of y with the help of x but the problem is we cannot say that y is actually causing the x right so that as an equation as a mathematical way we can uh, uh, use it as flexible as possible but in terms of decision making we cannot take any decision on x with just having y because y is not impacting on x which means if you have a disease and we have a symptom right you can say that like uh, based on the uh, 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 like a disease severity will be having the severe uh, symptoms right if i have like a uh, uh, high cholesterol i'll be having uh, uh, like high high symptoms related to that or if i have like a high uh, uh, covid infection i'll be having high symptoms related to that right but i cannot say that if i have more symptoms right if I, if i have like very severe symptom symptoms that doesn't mean that we have severe disease right so likewise that symmetry we cannot bring it out in reality so these three things are there one is we cannot just come to the conclusion of uh, like one is affecting another with the help of correlation and another one is we cannot just stop at one level of understanding how things are going ahead with just one layer of uh, layer of uh, like a, uh, analysis that we cannot do that and the third level we cannot translate y into x in reality right so all these three things are actually causing actually uh, relating to how things are actually impacting one on another like what is the relationship that relationship should not be the association association is just a direction if x is increasing y is also increasing but in reality that is not a causal relationship right causal relationship is nothing but in reality one variable should cause the impact on another variable right so for an example here we have one uh, we have an event uh, x that event is like sales of sunscreen that is also increasing as well as the sales of uh, uh, like uh, ice cream is also increasing right if you see both of them like both of them like independent events uh, like you just see because uh, we cannot say that uh, sunscreen uh, uh, is actually making people like uh, sunscreen sales is actually making people to buy more ice creams right that's not the case right but we need a causal relationship for that how can we understand what what is cost and what is association let's take an example of marketing activities right so that marketing activities will always have a like a like a good cause a good impact on the sales right so but oh, one thing we need which is like what is the quantum of impact let's say if i'm running for like marketing activities for four days or five days what will be the incremental sales that is added to our uh, uh, like our revenue right in that case like we we also need to know the quantum of the impact so first we just have the association but we don't know whether it is a causal relationship or not now we know that like a marketing activity has a causal relationship on sales but we don't know what is the amount or what is the quantum of it right meanwhile we need to understand one another problem there should be some hidden variables which can make impact on both x and y which is nothing but holidays let's say the holidays will make an impact on marketing activities as well and uh, uh, sales also right holiday itself has some incremental uh, value on revenue and uh, holidays also having an uh, like impact on the outcome from the uh, marketing activities click through rate can change number of views can change because of holidays so our ultimate aim is to 
avoid all the unnecessary things if i want to understand the cost or if i want to understand the actual benefit that i'm going to get out of the marketing activities irrespective of any other confounding variables or the extra variables we need to have a methodology right just to bring the relationship between marketing activities and sales right this one on one mapping and one on one relationship is needed that has to be uh, like uh, uh, brought out right so for that only we have a very good framework called causal inference which is nothing but uh, uh, like uh, to answer all these questions around like what is impacting what is there any uh, like a uh, 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 like viable impact existing or not if it is there what is the quantum so if i want to increase the impact what should i do so all those decision making related stuff can be done with the help of causal inference right before in, before getting into that let's learn few uh, uh, few of the terminologies like um, uh, we were discussing about cause and effect right let's uh, understand like what is actually cause what is actually effect here we can consider cause as a treatment treatment is nothing but any sort of activity that we are doing let's say if you are increasing your price that is a treatment if you are uh, like uh, taking a uh, like extra vaccine dose that is a treatment if you are coming up with a new marketing strategy that is also a treatment so whatever uh, whatever uh, uh, like activity that we are doing uh, and uh, uh, looking for a new outcome right that is treatment and the outcome we all know that which is nothing but our target are we uh, are we looking for like increase in revenue or do we need to uh, like uh, increase the marketing uh, campaigns efficiency or are we looking for profit or are we looking for like less death rate likewise we can have any number of outcomes you can consider any sort of uh, uh, domain that you are uh, working on right if you are working in like banking you can have like uh, our treatment is going to be a, a, like a building a fraud detection system and our outcome is going to be like a reduction in uh, uh, a number of transactional fraud right but the problem is that can be an unobserved variable even like we, we wouldn't be able to uh, record it anywhere but that variable is actually making some hidden impact on our treatment as well as the outcome as we discussed previously holiday is an un unobserved confounder most of the time we used to observe it but that is the third variable which is actually making impact or like a, like a making some changes in treatment as well as the outcome so in that case that's what we are also like uh, seeing uh, here like uh, if you see uh, the relationship between two of them that can be some other variable or that can be uh, uh, like uh, some uh, uh, um, uh, it's a bland uh, mathematical association can be there right so that can be another one variable which is an instrument variable which is nothing but triggering the treatment uh, for example if you consider marketing activity so that's a treatment what can make the company to come up with a new marketing strategy which can be uh, like a revenue less less revenue or it can be uh, if you consider the uh, treatment of like taking extra dose of uh, covid covaxin the treatment or the instrument variable can be like increase in trend in um, covid cases in the last few months or few weeks likewise likewise we can have like a many uh, variables which is actually triggering the treatment right so in that case um, uh, our ultimate aim is to just to concentrate on this relationship because like there are there, we have like a, this relationship which is actually triggering and there is some other confounding variables which is causing a lot of problems so in that case we just need to consider this by uh, by avoiding all the unnecessary things for that only we are having like a causal inference methodology right and in reality like we will be having the graph which is like very complex in nature it can be like uh, like many uh, relationships one can impact multiple things and one can have multiple outcomes uh, like this you can uh, consider so um, um, let's get into the details of uh, uh, like why do we need to care about this first of all so this actually uh, during 70s uh, and 80s like uh, julia pearl who's like a nobel laureate come up with the book called like a, 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 the book of why actually that book is actually answering many questions around uh, why do we even need this particular methodology or uh, like why is it actually uh, behaving like this like when we have a data multiple data sources we have multiple data points we have 
right? We, we like we are not answering the question of why through our conventional statistics. That's why we need a new uh, uh, methodology where we can answer why sales is increasing. It is because of increase in our, uh, our price, our our uh, um, marketing strategy. Okay, now we understand that like sales is increasing and it is because of uh, our marketing campaign, right? And we can simulate or we can like uh, imagine if I can increase my marketing campaign by 10 percentage, what will be my sales? Likewise, it's going to be the loop where we are like, growing from association, which is just seeing what is happening, with the help of association or correlation and to the next level of the ladder, which is like a taking the intervention which means measuring the intervention if i have marketing like if i have marketing campaign what will happen or if i have um, um let's say like a covid vaccine drive what will happen likewise we can measure the interventions capability then we have the counterfactuals which is imagining that what should i do right what if i had done uh, like a extra $200 of investment, why is it actually increasing the sales? Likewise, we can have three levels of thing, but we are going to concentrate on the second one, which is measuring the intervention. If I do something and I need to measure impact of that, and that has a lot of applications in terms of uh, measuring the campaign uh, efficiency, measuring the drug efficiency, and uh, uh, like finding the reasons for major, majority of customer related analytics like whether if, if a particular customer churned out from your company what is the reason is it because of a facility or is it because of operations right or if uh, if uh, you are getting new customers what is the major pulling factor for that likewise you can get a lot of answers uh, for your questions or hypothesis based on that answers you can actually build a very good uh, uh, decision strategy Right, because like data science or decision science is not just uh, end with uh, predictions by just putting some uh, like data into a model and uh, getting outputs using dot fit. It's beyond that, which is actually making the business to take the decisions. So, yeah. So causal inference is actually aiming the answers at the causal questions, and it's actually like measure the response of the outcome variable when the cost variable is changed. So here, cost variable we all know. Which is nothing but any activity that we're going to take. It can be marketing or um, a price reduction or anything. And we also know that like how much quantum, right? So as I said before, like the predictive models uncover just the pattern based on the association. But to intervene, however, we need to estimate the effect of changing input from one value to the another value, right? Even sometimes we will not be having any data points. We just be having data point for one state. For the next state, we don't have it. Even in that case, we need to be having a methodology to estimate the impact and also like um, uh, enable the business to take decisions. Right. So uh, if we consider the importance of causal inference, we'll be able to like uh, uh, like do many things. One is whether if we have an idea, let's say uh, we have a, a marketing uh, strategy. Before running that, if we want to assess that whether the particular proposed methodology will improve the uh, outcome or not like it's more like a pre-assessment and if we imp like if we actually rolled out that particular strategy implemented that strategy we can actually um, understand what is the actual reason behind it what part or what component has led to the change and if we know will it work or why did that work we'll be able to do that what should we what should we do in future right and overall effects also we can like measure right for the better understanding uh, like we have a lot of books around it um, uh, written by julia pearl and we have like uh, many uh, uh, like tutorials from uh, from uh, uh, do i uh, microsoft also right so so many questions we can answer through this one particular analysis right so for example here i'm going to like represent it in terms of like a mathematical way a, a kind of a, a like a step-by-step -step methodology let's say we have an rgm strategy which is revenue growth management strategy right that actually uh, figured out our revenue or our profit is going down in that case we need to 
uh, like uh, increase our sales for that we are triggering the new activity which is marketing spend right and that marketing spend will have the impact on sales but we don't know how to actually measure because of marketing spend how much uh, sales that we have gotten for that only we have a methodology which is like a, a provided by uh, conceptualized by uh, Julia Pearl which is called as do calculus so do is nothing but an intervention so it is nothing bad like whenever we want to if, if you want to calculate the incremental sales or the impact of marketing spend we can do the do operator which is we can increase the spend and we can measure the impact right but in reality we cannot go and take the uh, uh, like uh, experiments most of the time that's why what we can do is we can approach this in a probabilistic way what is we can say that we can calculate the probability of sales given we have an increment spent and we'll be having some sort of probability like okay if i have increment spent what is my prob like sales increase probability and if i have like uh, uh, if, if, I, if i don't have any sort of marketing spent related details which means if i don't have any sort of marketing um, um, uh, events right so then uh, like i'll be having just uh, probability of sales so if the probability of sales when i have an increment spent is greater than the probability of sales when i don't have any sort of increment spent i can simply say that marketing spent impacted the sales because we have neglected neglected most of the uh, confounding things right so we can simply say that like a p of y why we know that like sales uh, by doing x doing means intervening with the help of x here the x is increasing the spent is the probability of y given intervention x it's a probability based on the intervention and also we need to consider that we are adjusting the confounding variables which means we are removing all the other impacts due to the external z or third variable right which has the indirect cause on x and y that we need to do it so how can we do that for that we can utilize various algorithms such as propensity matching matching algorithm even we can do uplift modeling where we can like can neglect all sort of uh, confounding variables just concentrating only on pure x and y right so here i have the methodology how can we actually come up with the treatment effect or causal effect that a quantum of causal effect right we have the uh, uh, variable called do y right this uh, do y variable uh, sorry do y library is actually developed by microsoft and uh, right now they have collaborated with uh, uh, they have collaborated with uh, iaws so they have renamed it uh, into uh, uh, pi y so in that case uh, so it has like four major steps so one is nothing but uh, first we have uh, input data in input data we al 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 like already know that what is the action action can be anything like we already know that that uh, uh, interventions uh, marketing spend or you can consider like a vaccine dose or you can consider uh, some other price reduction you know the when we take any domain we'll be having other variables like um, uh, um, if you take the marketing strategy, there will be some other variables like holidays and uh, 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 like our product design, even competitor price is there, right? Competitor price will impact on uh, our sales as well as our marketing strategy, right? If they, if, if let's say, if you consider Coke and Pepsi, if Pepsi is re reducing its price, that Pepsi is taking some sort of strategy that will actually impact on our strategy impact right so other variables like data scientist or decision scientist or even if you are a machine learning engineer we should be having enough domain knowledge so that only we, we can actually bring the graphical structure it's not only for causal inference it is for any sort of modeling right so we need to be having a, a, a sort of a graphical structure saying that what is affecting what what is the relationship between another let's say here we have like action and outcome obviously action will be having a direct relationship with outcome that is what we we are actually looking for 
and action can lead to some other outcomes also v3 we have outcome one outcome can lead to some other outcomes like v5 and there can be another variable like a w which is a confounding variable which has impact on action and outcome like let's say holiday or competitor pranks and few other variables can be a trigger to the action right so this graphical structure we need to draw based on our domain knowledge based on the eda that we have done right what is the association between one and another we have, we have the how one variable is uh, having relationship with another variable like it's not only for causal inference it's also for like if you're working on bayesian networks or bayesian modeling you would need to know that right okay now we have the model which can actually say the relationship between one variable to another variable which is nothing but a, a causal mechanism it's nothing uh, it's an actually a, a, a graphical structure right so once we have that we need to identify the correct target estimate which means uh, uh, we, we have to come up with a formula for outcome by removing all the other uh, like a confounding variables effect then we have to estimate the causal effect like uh, because of action what is going to be the outcome right and for that we have many algorithms even we can simply use uh, uh, linear regression but th there is few methodologies and uh, we need to estimate again like a refute our estimation which is nothing but uh, a cross validation or back testing right so these are the four steps we know that how to create it and also we can simply uh, the model itself like do library itself will uh, do that but th there are many ways of estimating the causal effect one simple way is randomized uh, you can do the um, intervention on test data set and observe the y variable and control data set can be like a control uh, population can be as it is it's it's more like a clinical trial but uh, uh, like it's going to be like a, a, a the randomized control experiments going to be like a costlier one because we need to set up it we need to select a proper uh, like a population group and uh, uh, we need to uh, roll out the intervention and measure it right whereas instead of that we can do uplift modeling which is nothing bad there will be two different models where you can try to build one model on top of predicting the action so it's going to be like a relationship between y and uh, sorry w and action one model to map the relationship between w and action and another model to map the relationship between w and outcome so when you have two different models and two different predictions you can calculate the residuals of this model and that model so that you can remove all the uh, confoundingness or uh, all the impact which is caused by w on action and w on outcome so now we have removed all the impact of w so we just have action and outcome with building two different models and taking the uh, out uh, like uh, residuals using that we can again build another one model to get the actual impact of actions otherwise what we can do is building a propensity score propensity score to come up with the uh, uh, like a matching algorithm so this particular set of populations can be compared with another set of population so that matching because we cannot directly compare so we cannot simply compare oranges with apples or we cannot simply compare one location people to another location people so they have to exhibit some common covariates for that only we are actually doing propensity score weighting or matching algorithms so likewise we have n number of ways to remove all the other uh, confounding effects and just to confine with the uh, action and the outcome relationship and measure the value of the relationship right then we have uh, uh, like a refute which is nothing but back testing so this back testing you can consider as a cross validation you can take multiple uh, sample of data set and uh, uh, calculate whether uh, we are getting the repeatability or not or reproducibility or not so that we can uh, uh, like uh, reliable on our uh, causal effect estimation otherwise it will be having some other uh, uh, like a third variable impact right that's why we have like a refute so it's simple one is model your relationship identify the relationship then uh, uh, estimate the causal effect with the help of machine learning or statistical model then you can like uh, refute which is test your estimate right so this is simple thing but the problem is like uh, one good thing is like you can use it for any industry that you're working on if you are in customer analytics you can straight away go and build uh, an uplift model 
saying that what is the impact of your campaign a marketing uh, a strategy or if you are in a uh, let's say uh, if you are in a uh, like a process control uh, a project process analytics project you can actually measure the impact of a particular uh, uh, like a like a methodology or you can measure the impact of a particular uh, uh, process parameter setting because of this only you have actually gotten the y output like as you can do that or if you are in a pharmaceutical analytics you can do a lot of things around uh, causal inference saying that what is the impact of one treatment methodology or what is the impact of one uh, um, like a medicine because you can do that just currently most of the teams are just relying on a b testing or t testing or whatever it is but what i would suggest is like go ahead with the causal inference where we can actually harness the power of uh, uh, like um, uh, reliability and uh, uh, causality right so the next slide we have like uh, where it is getting used we'll be having a, a one uh, like a hands on thing but uh, before that i'll uh, like just uh, finish it so as you know marketing and campaign management we can use this a lot and uh, customer acquisition and uh, um, uh, retention so you can understand various factors let's say uh, i got a one problem one particular problem uh, during my mock project where uh, we were working for a banking sector where we were analyzing like um, having multiple uh, atms in a particular city will retain the customer or not and having a frequent uh, uh, like a support call or a call center like bpo calls like asking for whether you need a uh, like a retention like whether you need a bank loan or many spam calls we used to get it now whether that is actually making a uh, customer to churn from the company or like a particular bank or not right usually like every day uh, even every month end you usually get uh, multiple calls regarding uh, a number of um, do you need a uh, like a, would you require a, uh, a like a bank loan or would you require a credit card or not like we are getting lot of intervention from there but companies needs to understand like uh, will it actually make people to leave the company or is it not going to make any different right for that we actually built a propensity model based on like uh, customers those who are those who have like received the frequent call regarding the credit card or bank loan and uh, uh, those who have not received any based on that propensity things like whether they will be retained in the company or not we were able to understand the impact of uh, frequent calling and we we could find out like it is having impact of like a uh, 10 percentage saying that when you have more frequent calls it will actually increase the probability by 10 percentage to churn out from the particular like a particular bank right likewise you can easily understand the customer acquisition retention related stuff customer value lifetime value related uh, like um, um, analytics you can do that and here i have two different things one is on like a uh, um, uh, netflix scenario and another one is on uber scenario so in netflix usually like when we built a recommendation system we we consider may, 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 like many uh, parameters like uh, whether we have like a uh, send this mail to them or not uh, whether we have um, like uh, showcase this particular image on the front page or not or whether we have Uh, given this recommendation to the particular person or not so based on the whatever um like uh, whatever uh, 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 outcome that we are, like strategy that we are taking by putting the offer or by uh, sending the mails obviously someone would like have an outcome of like uh, watching some that particular movie but the problem is if we just consider um uh, uh, taking the strategy and uh, uh, measuring the outcome we don't know whether a particular person actually love korean movies or a particular movies default because of that actually our uh, uh, like recommendations or whatever strategy that we are taking it's not going to take any uh, like impact right so causal inference provides the formal tools to actually measure the true incremental value because if you don't have the information or if you don't have the mechanism to measure whether the particular person by default love a particular language or not for for me and all like no one has to send any uh, like recommendation related to a crime thriller movie because by nature i love watching crime thriller movie in that case like if someone is sending the um, like a, a placard or someone is like posting the billboard or sending the uh, 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 like a targeted mail and if i if by default i'm watching that movie every week or every month so that doesn't mean that like because of that particular campaign strategy only i'm watching that capability netflix has 
but basically whether they have this uh, um, like uh, allowed towards a particular content or not right and uh, in the uber side if you could see like uh, to understand the impact of uh, experiences of delayed delivery and customer engagement because of delayed delivery what happened whether the customer is actually churned out or not or are they like uh, ordering frequently or uh, uh, like uh, coming up with uh, new uh, requirement or not so that understanding uh, uber wants right for that they have considered another confounding variable saying number of eat orders because like if you have more orders in a particular time period obviously we would be having like delayed delivery right so that's why we need to remove the impact of number of eats orders which is like a number of orders in a particular time from the uh, like experience of the delayed delivery or customer engagement right then only we can be able to understand like okay because of delayed delivery our customers are going uh, like by one percentage or two percentage only so uh, this may not be the bigger problem on the other way around like if we have like bigger number because of delayed delivery our customer retention or customer engagement is reduces by 20 percentage or 30 percentage then it's going to be a bigger problem so we need to mitigate how can we uh, solve this delayed delivery uh, issues right so likewise like we have a broader spectrum of applications if you are working in let's say i'm just giving a clue if you are working in uh, retail or cpg you can you can actually uh, build a very good uh, pov around the pricing or uh, around the supply and demand uh, uh, mitigation like uh, uh, planning right how uh, your supply is actually causing or how are you actually getting stock outs is the stock outs because of holidays or is it because of the in, like a uh, uh, capability of your uh, inventories i guess we can do many things right you, you can just go and download a good data set in online just having like uh, um, like inventory data where you have a lot of inventory related activities and uh, stock outs uh, and uh, demand you have so you can understand like whether because of demand you are getting uh, stock outs or capability of your inventory right in capability of your in inventory is actually hitting uh, stock outs or not likewise you can uh, uh, measure that so that will really help the team to uh, understand uh, whether we do we uh, do we have like better demand planning or better um, inventory planning likewise we can take decisions right and uh, we have four different things as we already discussed we can just get into the uh, like a detailed uh, solution for a particular problem so here i have a problem which is nothing but this is actually a tutorial available in duwai because i didn't create a new one uh, so that you can directly go and check it i no need to send it across you can directly go and check it in the duwai's website itself so so the, the problem statement is the company uh, a big hospitality company wants to understand uh, uh, the impact on booking uh, like cancel the number of uh, like reserve reserved rooms are being cancelled they actually want to know that is it because of uh, we are keep on changing the rooms keep on reassigning the rooms from one place to another place like let's say uh, they want to understand like if if the uh, management or the hospitality team has changed my room from uh, first floor second room to second floor third room will it cause the customer to cancel their uh, booking and opt for some other new hotel or some other nearby hospitality like they want to know that because um, if if we know that like we'll be able to actually understand uh, uh, will our marketing strategy uh, sorry our uh, um, booking changes or uh, reassignments causing the booking cancelled or not right this is the simple problem uh, in in a hospitality industry it is happening so we already have the uh, uh, like uh, uh, kaggle data set it's already available there so as uh, the actual use case of that data set is based on the variable factors like lead time where are we going to stay how many people are going to come up with us how many nights are we going to stay based on that we wanted to predict that will this particular customer cancel their um, uh, cancel their uh, booking or not so this, so the actual use case of the data set is classifying particular reservation as a uh, like a cancelled or retained but we are transforming that into a very clear uh, example saying if someone is actually cancelling it what would be the reason it's going to be the why question why are they actually cancelling it is it because of we reassigning the rooms or not right we just have one treatment or one cause and one outcome right let's get into the um, um, uh, the solution part 
i'm just reconnecting it uh, for now like meanwhile uh, i'll just uh, answer the questions the first thing like how to use causal inference model in situation with more than one dependent variable our dependent variable becoming independent variable in the next stage yeah so the thing is like uh, since we have like causal inferences for like a uh, uh, like it's a complex one only because right now we are considering only one comp one uh, action and one uh, uh, yeah one answer and uh, one uh, one action and one outcome right but in reality as i showed in the uh, graph we'll be having multiple intermediate outcomes let's say one independent variable can be uh, uh, can have multiple uh, other uh, variables so it has to be solved step by step we first need to check what is the uh, target variable and what is the impact measurement that we want once we measure that we can move on to the next one let's say you have two dependent variable one is let's say you have like one is uh, roi and another one is sales right and uh, our target uh, like action is going to be uh, marketing strategy so if you want to understand the impact of marketing strategy to on top on sales we can do these steps one by one then we measured it then we can go to the next case in which we want to measure the impact of marketing strategy on sales like this we can go one by one step by step first and what do you mean by correlation it's a correlation is a very simple term which is actually measuring the degree of associativity um we have pearson correlation and um, uh, we have spearman correlation which is considering the covariance like the direction it is moving and the quantum it is moving together and coming up with the common value between minus 1 to 1 if it is plus 1 it's a positive correlation whenever uh, the movement upward movement in x variable there will be a upward movement in y variable i'm not saying that upward movement in x variable will make y to move upward it's not that that will be the association and how does data analytics sector including ai ml performing in digital transforming interconnecting what correlation consumption optimization consumption optimization of rpa consolidation so i am not the expert of rpa so maybe you can uh, 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 like add some more point on uh, uh, something on the question so that i can get the better understanding and the third the next question causal inference is same as multicollinearity so the thing is multicollinearity is a state a confounding variable here we have so that confounding variable has an impact which means the correlation on another action variable our action variable can have uh, association on another variable but causal inference is nothing but a solution to that if we have a multicollinearity in place if we have a confounding variable which is even not visible to us right our our system is not even recording it in that case causal inference will deconfound it will adjust the uh, the impact of confounding variables and remove it it will just consider the pure uh, impact done by x on y is this a b test with treatment and control goods but in the uh, uh, yeah but in the uh, uh, a b testing we'll be just having two different scenarios but we most of the time people don't consider other variables like uh, we have a and b but that can be some other place some some other variable and another one thing is like in a b we are just doing t test if you go and read in uh, uh, in the online you can see many of the tutorials or many of the papers are just relying on uh, uh, t test but what i'm saying is t test is built on top of association between the distribution it's not the cause and effect right that's why we are going ahead with the causal uh, inference based testing can treatment be like a binary non binary or continuous treatment yeah so here uh, if you consider uh, marketing strategy right the marketing spend can be the continuous variable like one month i'm doing like 10 100 sorry 10k and another i have like a 20k dollars investments likewise it can be a continuous treatment and uh, in the banking example what would be what would x be you can take any x let's say in banking you can have like a number of uh, uh, calls number of uh, customer care calls and the y can be whether they have retained or not that's one thing and another one thing is like increase in repo rate 
and uh, increase in interest rate and uh, uh, like uh, customer retention or uh, how many people are actually uh, coming up with the uh, new loan request like that's also customer uh, retention how do you identify hidden variables so hidden variables is actually most of the time like assumptions only most of the time we don't even like know that whether uh, there can be a, like uh, it, it's it's not a hidden variable it's more like unobserved variable which means uh, we know that uh, covid has some impact but the problem is we don't have the measurement on it we we have not observed it we don't have record for that this uh, causal uh, inference is similar to path analysis no actually in path analysis we will be actually coming up with the um, uh, it, it can be like optimal path to reach a to b we will be doing uh, like many graph related algorithms or some optimization algorithms coming up with the best path to reach a to b but in causal inference is just a replication like uh, the uh, the structural replication it is not uh, a path kind of thing can confounding variable be detected mathematically yeah so there is another concept called uh, causal discovery so right, this is one step like in causality this is one one shot of uh, uh, learning which is causal inference uh, to estimate the causal impact but in some time we don't have domain knowledge and also we don't have uh, any sort of idea in terms of how this causal structure will look like this graph will look like in that case we just have a data we need some methodology to come up with it come up with the uh, causal structure for that only we have methodology called a domain called causal uh, discovery so that will come up with the architecture and that will uh, help us in terms of detecting the confounding variables what will the z instrument be z is going to be a trigger let's say you have a uh, you have a record of like a profit and that profit is reducing so that reduction in profit may trigger your team to come up with a better strategy right so z our treatment instrument variable can be a trigger variable can confounding variables be seasonal obviously if you consider any variable holiday is also a confounding variable or uh, let's say age is also a confounding variable it will vary over time right does causal inference include mediation and moderation analysis actually mediation analysis is possible in uh, causal inference people are using it uh, even uh, duway has uh, mediation uh, 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 modeling or mediation algorithm is there uh, you can check uber's uh, page also they are using mediation analysis for uh, for most of the time does causal inference complements predictive analytics outcome most of the, it can be as in like uh, causal inference may say that uh, um, uh, like uh, if you don't follow proper feature engineering or uh, uh, checking the assumption of machine learning obviously the outcomes may be the complement with each other let's say uh, once you remove all the confounding variables uh, impact or other variables impact and you're just measuring the pure uh, uh, cause of x on y that can say that it is decreasing your sales but if you just consider like all the variables together and you don't even do multiple linearity check or uh, feature engineering or uh, uh, like um, assumptions of any algorithm it can give the other way around and uh, does uh, causal inference uh, complement that i have told you how is it useful for data engineers data engineers like uh, uh, I I yeah uh, yeah sorry to interrupt actually your screen uh, is not showing the questions means uh, participants cannot see the questions so in the meanwhile you can uh, like go to your presentation or share something on the screen is it visible now yeah yeah my question okay. okay no no the questions are not visible to the participants they are visible to you and panelists only oh okay that i is... i don't know that actually sorry yeah. i was okay. actually going yeah, to no questions issues. only so they are getting confused in the meantime so yeah okay got it maybe sure. you can set up that uh, for the questions okay fine um, um i i'll come back to the yeah sure uh, uh sorry i'll come back to uh, uh the questions after i explain this okay cool so okay. now uh, yeah cool now i have this so i'm just setting up all these things like uh, related to that so right now i'm just reading the data set from the uh, uh, like uh, the github which is their uh, um, solution thing um this is nothing but a hotel booking data set only 
so we have like a many variables like uh, what is that particular hotel whether it is cancelled or not what is the lead time how how, how many uh, um, like uh, seconds it take and uh, the year and all and we have like other attributes such as uh, one second i'll just showcase your columns it has like a, a market segment distribution channel uh, and also we have like a booking changes deposit who's the agent company and days in waiting list we have customer type also like how many people are going to uh, stay like how many weekdays or weekend days adults children like this we have many variables but what we need to do is we we need to concentrate on one variable on another variable which is the booking changes and uh, cancellation this one at least cancelled among all the other variables likewise you can check it on other things also let's say uh, uh, if i have a children will it have any effect on uh, cancellation or not or will lead time increase in lead time will uh, cause the uh, uh, cancellation or not likewise we can do and we are also considering few other things like uh, for the time being like we are doing like a total stay by combining uh, stays in weekdays and weekends we are just connecting it and guest we are combining all the number of people and different rooms changed how many rooms uh, whether the rooms have changed it or not right and we are calculating that variables like uh, using uh, pandas only then uh, we are uh, doing some sort of like uh, uh, null value dropping the null values uh, filling the na values with the help of mode all those things we are doing we drop unwanted things like a uh, date year and all that's not needed and we have finally we have few uh, data points saying like a marketing segment repeated guest previous cancellation booking changes deposit type like as we have variables so the major thing is going to be like uh, so this is just a eda sort of thing like uh, whether a, if a particular person like a deposit have the like a previous deposit or not based on that whether they have like, cancelled it or not right likewise we have the uh, uh, so mostly people those who don't have any deposit they have cancelled a lot right 74000 people have cancelled it and uh, yeah these are all just expected counts with this we don't need what we need is we need to create a causal graph so for that we need to write a graphical structure using pie graph saying the relationship here i have actually mentioned it so lead time first i'm starting with marketing segment so that will lead to that will cause the lead time and lead time will have the uh, uh, like relationship with is cancelled country will also have the relationship with lead time because like it will change with one country to another country room uh, assigned will cause these and country will change the meal because like every country will have its own meal plan likewise based on my understanding our understanding uh, the uh, we can create the relationships right and we can give it to the causal model here uh, the causal model is actually from the do y do y has the causal model there you can give the data set along with the graph the structure and what is the treatment we can mention it the right now the treatment is different room assigned and the outcome is what we want to check is cancelled so likewise we can do it at the if loop sorry uh, in a for loop condition saying you can take multiple uh, x variables and you can change it the same structure and you can measure based on different x values how is it actually impacting right that intervention all those things the causal model itself will create so let's create that um, uh this is what like the causal structure look like so here we have the is cancelled it has lot of uh, impact uh, like uh, the intervention variables but we are just concentrating on only one is cancelled and uh, booking changes right other all those things can be considered as the trigger variables or confounding variables right so let's find the, uh, the causal effect so we are just using like uh, model dot identify effect so it will identify the effect uh, what kind of variables and all can be considered so this will come up with the estimate inter like uh, expression so as you know that like uh, in the uh, in the deck i have shown that like a probability of y given to x right the same way we need to come up with the probability or expectation of is cancelled right provided we have like uh, uh, 
uh, like uh, is repeated guest how many number of guests are there along with that we are doing different room changes right which means we are considering some extra variables also for the benefit of uh, building a good uh, expression right then uh, once we come up with the estimate right estimate is nothing but the, the equation to calculate the um, like um, uh, like the uh, the probability of is cancelled right then we are going to estimate with the help of propensity score weighting which means so this will consider two different segments one is whoever have the uh, uh, room change and whoever don't have any sort of room change based on these two things this will build a classification model and that probability will be considered as a propensity score based on the sample size will weight it and we can calculate the uh, uh, estimation like uh, how much change is happening between uh, uh, probability of room cancellation if we don't have any room change and probability of room cancellation when we have multiple room changes room uh, different room assignments right and this is what called as average treatment effect so first we will calculate average treatment effect on uh, treated and uh, on control which means those who are not assigned to any different group which is a control and uh, the treated group is nothing but those who were assigned to a different group likewise based on these two probability we can come up with uh, probability here is a propensity score we can come up with the difference between that right. uh hi so here, yeah yeah uh, is it is it possible to share the link of this notebook with the yeah yeah i will share this yeah Okay, many are asking actually. Cool. So, is it actually visible? Like, uh, uh, the yeah, 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 yeah. We oh, can. Cool. Uh, so see. now the estimate is like uh, mean value of minus zero point two six. So in that case, we could understand that the probability is actually decreased, which means if there are multiple room assignments. Right, if one person is assigned to one room to another room, it is actually decreasing the chances of cancellation, which means the company is putting effort to retain their customer. That's what we could understand from that to make sure which this is a correct, um, like based on the uh, having different room assigned, is actually having a decreased probability of uh, uh, um, like the chances for a cancellation. We need to refute our. Uh, uh, estimates for that only we have a uh, few things like uh, random common cause which is nothing but like randomly we'll be getting data and read in the analysis again so that we can cross validate ourselves so both of them should be same like estimate effect and also new effect should be same here i have run that it will take some time because it have it has to take more samples and uh, run the uh, uh, model behind it propensity model behind and calculate it you can see that like um, we are having the same value 0 0.26 0 minus 0 0.26 minus 0 0.26 that case what we could understand is like uh, uh, even if we have like uh, randomly drawn covariates from the data and reruns the analysis there is no changes if if there are any changes we could say that like our estimate is correct right likewise we have multiple methodologies we also have like subset of values like uh, it's more like a uh, uh uh it's more like a cross validation where we'll be like having multiple segments of data subsets of data and uh, calculate the um uh, like um, calculate the um, um estimate and if there any ch if there is no change in estimate we can say that uh, um, um, both of them are same which means there is no uh, um, change in probability Right. Like this, we can do that. I'm just going to uh, like share the questions. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, be answering a few other questions also. Yeah, let us know when can find scadacity real life example. So heteroscadacity um, um, in real life, I couldn't recall it actually. Hmm. Let's say. Yeah, um, uh, let's say you have price change and uh, you have uh, uh, the sales, right? So the impact of price change. So first of all, I just want to confirm like uh, um, whether this question uh, is visible to everyone. Uh, no, actually the question, uh, everyone cannot see the question, but yeah, since you have read it out, they can understand. Okay, cool. 
so uh you know so usually if it is homoscedasticity the relationship between uh, price change and the sales uh, sales number should be constant but the problem is in reality if you change the price beyond one range you will see the sudden pattern change in terms of uh, uh, sales so in that case you could easily find that uh, uh, like the, uh, the heteroscedasticity nature uh, in between the price change and uh, sales if we have multiple features like 20 30 variables how do we find their causal effect on target variable that i have already answered that you have to go through one by one uh, uh, like um, having a like intervention uh, operations can you please explain propensity and matching okay so first of all when we do uh, any sort of uh, uh, treatment effect measurement uh, we need to have two different groups because we cannot go and do uh, like a experiment saying like uh, don't uh, give uh, treatment to this particular team and give particular team that randomized control experiment we may, we may not be able to do uh, like efficiently in all the cases because the research centers can do that big tech companies can do that but whoever doing like uh, um, like analytics as a part of their big business may not be able to do that that may be taking more time so in that case we actually need to use the observational data instead of the experimental data in that case we need to compare two different segments one is test group and control group so for that the test and control group can be uh, who whoever part of uh, like um, Uh, like a marketing campaign and whoever is not part of marketing campaign in that case we need to have a proper matching saying we cannot simply compare one person to another person we have to have a propensity which means the inclination towards one particular segment so that will help which group they can be in whether they can be in a, a test group or control group that is one thing and another one thing is once we have that based on their covariates we need to have a distance measure or like a kind of a uh, like a metric to compare both of them in a same scale let's say uh, if i want to uh, uh, see the impact of marketing campaign i cannot take two persons one person is from japan and another one person from uh, america no i should not take it i should be having some common metrics let's say kind age and uh, 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 like uh, gender like with multiple covariates will contribute to that matching strategy once we matched same country same uh, type of uh, uh, like a, uh, behavior same type of demographic then we can actually do that uh, uh, cost cost effect calculation that's what like propensity and uh, uh, matching will go on and any examples of counterfactuals counterfactuals is nothing but when in a factual world we are doing an intervention let's say Uh, uh like we are doing a marketing campaign so that's a factual thing if we don't do marketing campaign what will happen that's what the counterfactual so it's more like imagine like if we don't do this what can happen so whatever uh, the opposite part of uh, uh, our interventions will be a counterfactual and can you suggest some materials for bayesian inference so there is a good book um uh, even like uh, there is a um 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 there is a library called b and learn maybe you can reach out to b and learn's website b and learn.org i guess we built using uh, we actually built a, a bayesian network using b and learn so that we can uh, refer to that that has uh, a capability of building a dax and coming up with the conditional probability of particular uh, uh, like data points and all that we can utilize that bayesian uh, like uh, b and learn or you can uh, go and uh, go through the bayesia labs website bayesia lab that website you can go through how is it useful for data engineers actually i don't find any uh, like usefulness for data engineers in, in, based on my learnings because data engineering is completely infrastructure part and uh, getting data uh, to the data lake or warehouse and now data breaks lake house is there it's more like data integration part only but data engineers if if your company has the uh, privilege of data engineers can do analysis or anything maybe you can utilize it but commonly we don't have any use cases yeah. any any more questions and in chats 
yeah um, i would love to like hear back from you uh, like based on uh, the session if you find it very well or if you want to give any feedbacks um, uh, uh, if you want to connect with me maybe you can uh, um, like reach out to me via linkedin um, or even like you can reach out to me my website prabhakarnchandran.com you can reach out to me there uh, i'm uh, like sharing a lot of things on um, machine learning deep learning uh, data science related stuffs you can reach out to me uh, my uh, linkedin id prabhakaran chandran uh, the ds yeah uh, sure yeah. i have shared your uh, linkedin profile in the chat section okay cool thank you yeah so it was a great uh, experience for me like uh, uh, having a very good crowd and uh, talking about a very uh, uh, a good content concept and whatever i have discussed today is very uh, like very basic stuff and my intention is to bring the uh, like awareness to people like uh, they can uh, work on causal inference they can build cool stuffs on that if you are working in any company you can pitch the idea to your clients or your team so that will actually unleash a lot of uh, uh, good use cases that's the whole intention it has lot of uh, technicalities um, a lot of mathematical related concepts if you are inclined towards this particular concept of uh, causal inference based on the today's class you can start learning that if you have any questions you can reach out to me yeah yeah uh, that's thank it. you so much yeah yes yeah. uh, thanks a lot prabhakaran yeah. uh, on behalf of analytics vidya i would like to thank you for your time and delivering such a wonderful session Uh, i am sure our audience found it insightful and hopefully we can conduct more such sessions with you in the future